twice as much per capita on a dysfunctional healthcare system which charges us the highest prices of the world for prescription drugs. Enough is enough. It is my view, something that I believe from my first day in politics decades ago, that health care must be a right for all of our people, that we must move toward a Medicare for all single payer program. We are living, as all of you know, in a highly competitive global economy. And in an economy like that, it goes without saying, no one can deny, that we need the best educated workforce that we can. And furthermore, as human beings, we all understand that education and learning and intellectual growth is an essential part of what a human being is. And yet, in America today, we have the totally absurd and insane situation that when we need more and more qualified, well-educated workers, today, tragically, hundreds of thousands of bright, capable young people are giving up the dream of a higher education because their families do not have enough money. And on top of that, on top of that, we have the insanity of millions of people, not just young people, now middle-aged people, who are oppressed with these outrageous student debts which go on decade after decade. sense is that. What our job is, is to encourage people to get the best education possible. To say that in a civilized democratic society, education is at the top of our priorities. Not to put impediments in the way of working class kids. I have recently proposed and will fight to implement as President of the United States legislation which provides free tuition in every public college and university. And think, and think of what it will mean, not just to young people who are going to college, to know that they'll be able to think about what it means to kids who are in the sixth grade or in the first year of high school. Because they will know that if they study hard, if they take their academics seriously, they will in fact be able to make it into the middle class. They will in fact be able to get the jobs that they have dreamt about. And on top of that, in this legislation, what we have also done is to say that we are going to substantially lower interest rates on student debt. Let me touch on one other issue. I am the ranking member uh, of the Budget Committee, uh, which means the leader of the opposition. And I want to tell you something. The media kind of forgot to report this. So I will mention it to you. At a time when our middle class is disappearing, at a time when families in Minneapolis and in Vermont are having a hard time feeding their kids, at a time when elderly people are forced to choose between heating their homes in the winter or buying medicine or getting the food that they need, at a time when working class families cannot afford to send their kids to college, here's what the Republican budget 
that passed Congress last month does. It throws 27 million people off of health insurance. Throws them off. It ends the Affordable Care Act. It makes a $400 billion plus cut in Medicaid, which will heavily impact families whose parents are in nursing homes and take away health care from low-income families. So instead of figuring out how we provide health care to all, they throw 27 million people off of health insurance. The Republican budget cuts Pell Grants by $90 billion over a 10-year period, making it harder for young people to afford college. The Republican budget, at a time when families are having a hard time feeding their kids, cuts food stamps, the WIC program, nutrition programs, by billions and billions of dollars. And to add insult to injury, the Republican budget gives huge tax breaks to the top two-tenths of one percent by repealing completely the estate tax. Now, this may be the priorities of the Koch brothers and the other billionaires who control the Republican Party. That is not our morality. Those are not our priorities. And for those people who say that we've got to cut Social Security, that we've got to cut benefits for disabled veterans, we say over our dead bodies. But not only should we not be cutting Social Security or Medicare or Medicaid, but in terms of Social Security specifically, you know and I know that there are a lot of seniors and people with disabilities out there who are trying to get by on twelve, thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars a year, barely do it. Instead of talking about cutting Social Security, we're going to be expanding Social Security. Instead of talking about cutting Head Start and child care, we're going to be talking about universal, affordable, pre-K education. Now, I think some people out there may say, well, you know, what Bernie's talking about is kind of expensive and it's kind of radical. But let me tell you really, it is not. And what I hope very much, you do not get caught up in the mindset that is so pervasive around our country today. And the mindset is, well, we have a deficit. Should we cut education by five billion or 20 billion? And the liberals say, only cut it by five billion. Should we throw this many people off of healthcare or that many people off of healthcare? Should we give this big a tax break to the corporations or only a little bit of a tax break to the corporations? We have got to change that mindset and that worldview in the wealthiest country in the history of the world. In the wealthiest country in the history of the world, we have got to think big and have a different vision for what this country can be. from working families and the middle class upward. And that is the premise under which we begin this discussion. Can we afford as a nation to provide free tuition in colleges? Of course we can. Can we have a high quality 
excellent child care system which is affordable to working families? Of course we can. Can we join the rest of the industrialized world and have a national health care program guaranteeing health care to all of our people? Of course we can. of income goes to the top 1%? No, we don't. So what my hope is, is twofold. First of all, to repeat, Bernie Sanders can't do it alone. We have got to do it together through a strong grassroots movement. Second of all, we have got to think big, not small. We have got to, in our own minds, in our own hearts, imagine a nation and a government which works for all of us, not a government dominated by a handful of billionaires and campaign contributors and well-paid lobbyists. We can create that America because when we stand together, there are a heck of a lot more of us than them.